In Piemonte, aka Piedmont, Italy, Nebbiolo is the king where it produces the great wines of Barolo Barbaresco. However, I think Barbera is a grape that you should pay attention to. Here today, I have eight wines that are 21 to 25 US dollars. I think this is the fairest blind tasting video I've ever done. The prices are about the same. It's the same grape variety. Barbera is a dark skinned, high acid, low tannin grape variety, which makes it very food friendly. It's definitely for people that like a little more acidity, like that tartiness in their red wines. Barbera Barbera is one of those grape varieties that I've never had a negative response to when I introduce new wine drinkers to new wines. Records of Barbera and Piemonte go back to the 18th century, so it might be a relatively new grape variety. Up until a few decades ago, it was the third most planted red variety in Italy. In recent years, it slid down to fifth as Merlot and Primitivo have climbed the ranks. It used to be known for making simple and sipid wines, and when producers started to take this variety seriously, they found that they could make complex, age-worthy wines. The best and most memorable Barberas I've ever tasted are Vietti's Scarone Vigne Vecchie and the Brida Bricco del Uccellone. Those wines come in about $100, so they're not cheap. These wines we have here today are more affordable. For me, the distinctive quality of a Barbera is dried cranberry and earthiness. I was addicted to dried cranberries when I was a kid. I wanted all that sugar. I loved that tartness. Two of the most common Appalachian Barberas are Barbera de Alba, which are from the hills around Barolo and Barbaresco, and then Barbera de Asti, which is on the east side of Piemonte. Monte. Barbera de Asis generally are a little bit more acidic, while the Barbera de Albas are a little bit bigger, which is contradictory because in Alba, most of the best vineyard locations are planted with Nebbiolo, where in Asti, all the best vineyard locations are saved for Barbera. There's even a crew in Asti called Nizza, which we have one of those here today. For me, those are impressive, super high value for money Barberas. You'll also see Barberas in Lenga Rosos, which can be blends of grapes like Dolcetto, Nebbiolo, Barbera, Fresa, and other Others. Those are also excellent value for money wines. Barbera is planted throughout Italy because it can retain acidity, but today here we have all examples from Piemonte. I think these are great buys if you want that taste of Piemonte. There is a distinctive flavor there without the high price tag. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. I'm really excited these wines should over deliver tasting out of a great glass. This is the Rito Pinot Noir Performance Glass. It has these unique striations, they call them optical striations, but Rito claims that increases surface area makes the wine taste better. This is authorized for a lot of grapes, and I think Barbera, because they have pretty aromatics, will show pretty well. This is quickly becoming my favorite wine glass. I have a link in the description box below. It's not cheap, but it is an awesome glass. James Suckling has the 90 point glass. I think this should be the true 90 point glass. It makes wines taste so good. Let's start out with number one. I'm going to taste, reveal one by one. One comes at me. It doesn't have the sour cranberry note. It has more of the sour cherry note. Sometimes I feel like some Barberas, if they lean more on the sour cherry side, they'd be hard to tell from Sangiovese, but not Chianti Classico. Ask maybe some like Sangiovese Romagna. This does have the earthy notes. I love that Piemontesi ones, even the basic Barberas, still have that earthiness. White pepper, there's even a little bit of menthol. Let's give it a taste here. It smells good. It smells clean, not dirty at all. A lot of tartness. These are soft wines. The tans aren't necessarily big. These are wines you're gonna to wanna to have with braised meat, tomato-based dishes. This is delicious. It has nice length, a nice little spiciness. Granted, it is the first one of the tasting. I've tasted more complex Barberas in the past, but this is clean, delicious. I'm gonna give it 89 points. I think it's a heck of a buy. Let's see what it is. The acidity, I feel like it could be a Barbera de Asti. I have a little bit of a mix. Let's take a look and see. It's not, but this is a nice clean wine. This is the La Raya Piemonte Barbera 2022. This comes in at 21 bucks. La Raya is a biodynamic producer. Piemonte is an appellation that covers all of Piedmont, so I don't know where these grapes are from. Brought in by Rosenthal, great importer. He imports small producers, wines that align with his philosophy. 21 bucks for a biodynamic wine. Biodynamic wines can get expensive. I think that's very worth seeking out. Super clean wine. Let's move on to two. Has those dried cranberry notes. Two's a little bit deeper. Maybe just a touch of funk. This is quite complex. This has lots of pepper. Has that Piemontesi flair. I don't know how to describe it. Some people say that they get hazelnuts out of red wines from Piemont. Sometimes I get chestnut or baked chestnuts. I don't necessarily get hazelnuts. I have a little bit of that there. The earthiness, the pepperiness, this is quite nice. This is rich, serious, has some layers of complexity. You have the fruit, you have the earth, you transition some savory components. 
mouthwatering acidity. The first one had a little more acid. My mouth watered a little bit more. That's how you can tell if wines have high acidity. Your mouth will water a little bit. However, higher tannins will bring down the perception of acidity. Also, sugar also brings down the perception of acidity. Actually, tasting wine has really helped me with cooking, adjusting with salt, spiciness, sweetness. Uh, 90 plus points. Very good wine. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's an Asti and an Alba. I'm just excited to see. I think it's very good. Very, very good. <laughs> Producer that I'm impressed with. This is the Abrigio Giovanni Barbera da Alba Superiore. If you see Superiore on the end of Barbera da Alba or Barbera da Asti, it just means they need to be aged longer, some of it in wood. 2020, this comes in at $26. On the back it says Rocky de Frisu, so I guess it is a single vineyard wine. Cool label with a backpacker. That is bye, 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 bye. I want to have pizza with this. This is awesome. That's a good complex, nice Barbera. Let's go on to number three. As always, I Coravin these, then I had somebody mix them up for me. Let's move on to three. Three, very similar to number two. Like almost identical, sour, like almost identical. Sour cranberry, chestnut, pepper. Maybe, but maybe this might be slightly floral. These are pretty wines. Even though I love tasting them. Once I turn the camera on, I'm ready to go. It took a little bit of extra <laughs> discipline to get me to shoot today, but now I'm excited that I am. It's gonna come out on the mouthfeel because these are similar. Nose exactly the same as the first two. On the palate, this has way more acidity. Number two had a little bit more layers of complexity. This here, it's very good, but you're gonna need the high acidity. You're gonna want the high acidity, so you have the fruit, the acidity. I like the complexity of two. I still think this is a very good wine. I'm gonna put it 89 plus-ish. I mean, just can't quite go 89 plus. I think it's a good wine, very good wine. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me, this is the GD Vacher. This is the Barbera de Alba, just standard, not Barbera de Alba Superior like the first one. 2021, this also comes in at 26 bucks. This is widely available. GD Vacher also makes a Lange Rosa, which is like 15 bucks. I put it in a Piemonte value red wine video, I think it's excellent. Good wine. I think in Italy you can find it for even a lot less. Funny, number two is a Barbera de Alba Superiore, a little bit more complex. This was a standard Barbera de Alba, but it was still very good, just similar flavors. Let's move on to four. Four, I can definitely smell the oak treatment a little bit. Not that's a bad thing, so you get a little bit more mocha, some cranberry. The oak doesn't take over fully, but the mocha adds a nice complexity to this. Maybe even a little bit of mud, kind of a funkiness. Chestnuts as well, I'm digging the nose, just like number two. On the palate, you have a little bit more richness. You have mocha, more black cherry on the palate. Whereas in cranberry upturn on the nose, just a, just small tannins, but they don't really grip. Really nice. I'm liking the complexity here. You're gonna want just a tad more oak flavor, but I still think it's very good. I'm gonna give it 90 points. This is deep. I wonder if this is like a Barbera de Asta Superiore. Let's take a look. One of the appellations I talked about, this is the Vincchia Valle Sera. This is La Donna Nizza, 2020, 27 bucks. I just gave it 90 points. Vincchia Valle Sera is a cooperative in Monferrato, the eastern part of Piemonte. They focus a lot on Barbera. Nizza is a fairly new crew. The wines from the village of Nizza used to be labeled as Barbera de Asti Superiore. Just recently, I think in the mid 2000s, they upgraded Nizza to its own appellation. I did a tasting at Nizza a few years ago with a lot of producers and I was blown away by the quality. The wines are very fairly priced. You're supporting a cooperative, you're supporting the little guy. That's a really good wine. Ooh, five. Five is, is bright. It smells more floral. It smells lighter, so to speak. Tons of earthiness, a lot of spiciness, incense to go along with the cranberries, but the incense and the floral qualities kind of take over a little bit more than the fruit. Doesn't smell like it's heavily oaked. Bright, clean, it was like, I'm still gonna give this also 90, but it's kind of the opposite of the Nizza. Nizza wines tend to be a little more structured. They do a little bit better with oak age. The Nizza is just a little bit bigger, while this one is just bright, pretty, clean, 90 points. I think it's very, very good. Another good producer. This is the Monkey at all the Barbera de Alba Superiore 2020 producer that I really, really like their Barolos. Comes in at 20 bucks. 15% alcohol, so it's a heavier Barbera. I didn't pick up the heaviness here. I think that's a beautiful wine. Wine number six. This 
smells almost Nebbiolo-esque. It really does. This has rose petal type flavors, cranberry, sour cherry, or okay, hold on. Now the barbaraness comes out a little bit. Now you get some dried cranberries. At first on the nose, I was like, this smells like a Lange Nebbiolo. This is not just a simple fruity wine. It has the Piemontesi flair. This wine has character. It really does. This is a lighter wine. This is a wine you have to think about. This is like the Pinot Noir of Barbera. I'm joking. It's lighter, you have to think about. There are a lot of layers here. Hitting my palate personally, I think people, a lot of people, a lot of drinkers will probably think like the Nizza's the best wine. This one has more subtleties, you have to pay attention for it. Abrigio Giovanni was probably my favorite before this, but this is now my favorite. I'm gonna go 91 points. I think this is very good, very good. Producer I like very much. Adriano Marca Vittorio. This is the Barbera da Alba Superiore. 2019's got a touch of age on it. I did see that in the color. So, you know, Barbera can resemble Lange Nebbiolo-esque with age on it. This comes in at 25 bucks. I love this producer. Young woman now at the helm. Michaela. I first met them when they came to Singapore when I was not in the wine business and I did a wine dinner there. Then I visited them. Those are impressive wines. Really an under the radar Barbaresco producer. In fact, with my collector group coming up soon, I have Piemonte red wine blind tasting and I think I'm gonna bring one of their Reserva Barbarescos. Nice wine. Let's move on to seven. Number seven. Number seven shows a lot more oak. Lots and lots more oak. This is like a Barbera de Alba Superiore. It's oaky. Ooh. Okay, shake out the oak. Now I get black cherry, dried black cherries, white pepper, dried cranberry, lots of mocha. Now, here's the thing. I think a lot of people, especially in this price point, are going to like this wine. For me, the oak, the mocha notes kind of take over a little bit more than I want. I do feel some wood tannin up front. I think it's a high quality wine. I think a lot of people are gonna think it's awesome. Just to my palate, for my palate personally, I don't enjoy it as much. I'm gonna give it 87 points. I still think it's a good wine, but not, I'm not, just for my palate, I'm not enjoying it as much. This is the Vicchia Valio Serra, the same as this. This is the Barbera de Asta Superiore. Okay, with more wood, Vigna Vecchia, Old Vines, 2019, 26 bucks. Much more go for the Nizza. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the last one. Wine number eight. Oh, pretty. I know this is not gonna sound attractive, but it does kind of smell good. You know that skunk smell when they spray? This has a little hint of that, but not in a bad way. It's kind of attractive actually, along with the sour cranberry and there's incense. There's floral notes. This is quite complex. Cranberry spiciness. It smells spicy. <laughs> it's so funny because you smell just a, just a hint of that kind of skunky. It's not bad. It's, it's interesting complexity here. Palette's delicious. Cherry, bright acidity. It's clean. Don't get that skunkiness on the palate. Here's the thing about Barberas. When you see a Barbera, especially the ones that you're gonna see on the shelf in America, importers, distributors have worked to pre-select, present the best wines possible on the shelf. You're gonna be able to buy with confidence, especially if you're having these with food. Tart, delicious, 89 points. Just very, very, very good Barbera. Let's take a look here. This is the Giacomo Finocchio, very good producer, Barbera de Alba Superiore 2021. This comes in at 26 bucks. Producer that I absolutely love their Barolos classic Piemontesi producer nice no fuss tasting tell me do you love Barbera do you have any favorite producers? I'd love to hear drop it in the comments below